when crisis come, the developing countries and emerging economies becoming extremely vulnerable, particularly the least developed economies. So one of the reasons for fragility might be related to the inflation. What are some of the best advice and tools they could have right now? Globalization this past 40 years has been a very powerful force in keeping global inflation down, right? Because, because you have so many real-time solutions to the provision of, of, of goods and services because, because the world is connected, inflation was kept down. So more globalization brings about not only more prosperity, but I see as well more economic stability over time. And because of COVID, because of geopolitical reasons, because of global competition, because of trade protectionism, because of the, uh, say, effects of the Great Recession of the uh, of 2008, and then the, the crisis in Mediterranean Europe in 2011, we sort of uh, stepped away from globalization a, a bit, right? Uh, I like to say that we have we started to run the risk of deglobalization, which has been ex exacerbated over the past five years with phenomena like Brexit, and now with all of this talk about precautionism, which in my opinion is just another name for for protectionism. So, so hopefully, as as uh, global supply chains are restored, and and more players also coming to the game because that the emerging economies are taking more and more bigger and bigger slices of the global GDP pie. India is going to grow in between 8.5 and 9%. Mm. China, even with the, with the punctual lockdowns, is going to grow anywhere between 4.5 and 5. Brazil is going to grow north than 2%. South Africa is going to grow north than 2%. Indonesia, close to 6 Egypt, close to six. Bangladesh, a new member country, is going to grow north of, 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 of 7%. So as these big emerging economies have, have more of a sophisticated role in, in value networks, that hopefully will also bring help bring inflation down because the levels of globalization, the sophistication of globalization is also evolving. You know, there are so many on the hands of a new development bank. How would you describe your focus right now, especially when the world is changing dramatically around us? In the next couple of weeks, uh, Qin Wei, the new development bank will celebrate its seventh anniversary. So it's it's a Congrats. child. It's a seven year old child. And as you as you evolve as an institution, mm -hmm. there is a very strong emphasis on the quality of what you do. There's this expression that I love so much, and I think uh, you had asked me about the focus. Perhaps our most important priority now is the development impact. So whether whether the development impact is coming from a project of, of $100 million or half a billion dollars, the important thing is that the uh, development impact is exponentiated, that you reach the greatest quality, the greatest benefit to the greatest number of people. How do you get that? So you get that with more technology. You get that by tapping uh, different sources of funding. You get that by working very closely with different actors in your, in your countries. And you get that also by building a talent intensive institution, which is what we are doing uh, at the New Development Bank. To summarize the best possible answer to your question, the focus of the development of the New Development Bank at this point is the development impact it can generate to its member countries.